Hey, first grade friends and families, it's Miss Burns here, and we are here for week five, day five of math. This week we've been really tackling geometry, and we said that geometry is just a fancy word for the study of shapes. And yesterday we started discussing 3D shapes. We said that 3D shapes are those solid shapes that pop right out from a screen or from your paper. They look tall like a building. That's different from a 2D shape that's flat like a pancake. Well, today we're going to you be composing 3D shapes. This is going to be really fun. It's mostly going to feel just like you're playing. And here's the deal. We are going to be able to do the following. I can use 3D shapes to compose other 3D shapes. Well, we touched the standard 1G2 on Wednesday when we were composing 2D shapes. So let me show you what we did there. If you watched my video where I showed you that awesome online tool, we said that when we compose something, compose is just a fancy word for put together. So for example, I have this 2D shape here. Remember 2D shapes are what? Flat, like a pancake. Thank you very much. I can compose this square with one, two rectangles. So two rectangles together compose one square. I'm gonna move this guy out of the way for a second. Well, we can also compose hexagons. That's another 2D shape you can compose. And one of the ways that we did that was by taking a trapezoid as well as a rhombus and a triangle. And I showed you all sorts of different ways that you can compose or put together 2D shapes. Well, today we're gonna do that with 3D shapes. And as I said, you're gonna feel like you're just playing. It is kind of like playing, it is kind of like making things up, but instead of just playing, you're gonna be able to tell somebody exactly what shapes you are using. So a quick review before we start of the 3D shapes that we discussed yesterday. We said that the defining attributes of 3D shapes are the number of faces, edges, and vertices that that shape has. For example, a sphere is a 3D shape, you guys call it a ball, and I say, um, wait, what's the real name for it? A sphere, it rolls. It has zero faces, zero edges, and zero vertices. Well, that's different from a cube. A cube has six faces. Remember, the faces are these flat parts. Twelve edges. The edges are on the sides. You can run your finger, finger along them. And eight vertices. Vertices, remember, are just corners. Okay? So these are all 3D shapes. We've got cones, rectangular prisms, and cylinders. I'm going to show you today a variety of 3D shapes, and we're just going to put some together to make something different. And after we create our structure, we have to be able to name which 3D shapes that we used, and we'll know what we used based on their defining attributes, their faces, their edges, excuse me, faces, their edges, and their vertices. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Well, I have a cylinder. I know it's a cylinder because it has two circular faces, one on the top and one on the bottom. It kind of looks like a can. No edges, because this is all around, and no vertices, there aren't any corners. Well, watch what happens when I take my cylinder and I put a cone on the top. Hey, that looks almost like a little hut, doesn't it? Like a little troll could live inside of there. It's kind of like playing, you're putting something together, but instead of saying, hey mom, I built a hut, you would say, hey mom, I built a hut. And the bottom is using a cylinder, and the top is using a cone. I know that the bottom is a cylinder because it has two circular faces, no edges and no vertices, and I know the top is a cone because it has one circular face and one vertex on top. Cool beans, right? Let me show you another example. Let's say that I'm messing around with my cubes. Here, I've got a cube. Whoops and another cube. I know that these are cubes because they have six faces, 12 edges, and 12 vertices. Here's all my defining attributes of cubes. And then I have another baby cube. I might look at this and say, hey mom, hey dad, hey grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, sister. I just built a square snowman. But instead of using spheres, I actually built each of his body parts out of cubes. Well, little Johnny, how do you know that those are cubes? Well, let me tell you, Mom, because I know the defining attributes of a cube are that it has six faces, 
12 edges and eight vertices. And you can go around and show them up. It's six faces, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 edges, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I didn't do all 12, sorry, lost track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and eight vertices, those are the corners. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're just playing. And then when you're playing, you're able to articulate or explain exactly what you're doing. Let's say we want to build a rocket ship. Hey mom, I'm building a rocket ship, but I'm going to use a cylinder. Oh, how do you know it's a cylinder? How do you know those big words? Well, cylinders are 3D shapes that have defining attributes like two faces, zero edges, and zero vertices. Here are all their defining attributes. So I'm going to use my cylinder. Let's see, my rocket ship's going to fly up in the air. One of the attributes of the cylinder is that it has circular faces, which is why it's rolling around on me. I'm going to use my cone as the top of my rocket. Let's see, what should we put on the bottom? I've got all sorts of shapes. Maybe, this is a pyramid. A pyramid goes on the bottom, and that's going to help you. Ooh, look at this. This looks sort of like an arrow. Or, if we're being really clever and creative, maybe it's a marker or a pencil. I created my marker or my pencil, or hey, now it looks like a tree. See, friends, it just looks like we're playing, except for instead of just playing, we're thinking about the defining attributes of these, whoops, 3D shapes with a cylinder on the bottom and a, this is called a square pyramid. My kindergarten, friends that I had in kindergarten last year should know it's a square pyramid because it has a one square face on the bottom. We're able to use these defining attributes of 3D shapes as we're building. Now, as you're building, you're probably thinking like, but Miss Burns, I don't have that stuff. You have all these cool teacher things that you get to use as you're building. I don't have that. Okay, no problem. But guess what you do have, as we discussed yesterday? You have some kind of cylindrical container at home. If you don't have something that's holding your Q-tips, I promise you, you go in your kitchen cabinet, you're going to find some cans. You're going to have some canned peas, some canned beans, canned something. Use cans. I'll bet you anything if you go into that fridge, of course, with permission, that you've got a rectangular prism of butter. I'll bet you if you go in the bathroom, you have a cube of tissues that you can use. I'll bet you, if you look in the bathroom, you'll also find a cylinder of toilet paper that you could use to build or compose 3D shapes, okay? So your job today, friends, is to, a few things actually, complete your Microsoft form below this video, and then I really want you to go around your house with mom, dad, grandma, grandpa's, whoever's permission, and start finding more of those 3D shapes that you actually have just lying around the house and compose something with them. So if you wanna build yourself or compose a tower of toilet paper, cool. Just be sure that you're asking permission first because mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever might not want you touching all of their stuff. So friends, again, we are composing or putting together 3D shapes with other 3D shapes to build something. And as we're building, we are explaining or describing those defining attributes of those 3D shapes. All right, friends, thank you so much and have a lovely day. Get that work done. Bye, friends.